have too much joy. Oh, glory to God. I feel so much joy in my spirit. See, bringing God's word to you has never been more exciting. <laughs> Praise God. Now, now, that's why my prayer every day. I pray you see what I see. I pray you hear what I hear. You, you, you can have sadness. You can have moments of, I mean, you say, oh, dullness in your life. Come on now. You, you know what's going on inside us every moment, every second? We're bubbling by the Spirit of God. And I praise the same with you. Get out of that sadness. Come on. No, 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 no. Seriously, it's time to end that sadness. Get up. Get out from that place. Stand up and tell yourself, I'll never be sad. Why should why am I even sad? <laughs> why? Because the Lord is with me. Hey, if he is with you, have you asked him right now, Lord, what do I do about this situation? Oh yeah, it's as simple as that. Just like I did it. Lord, what do I do about this situation? Are you ready to do that right now? Go ahead and do it. Yeah, just go ahead and do it. That's all. That's all. You don't need like, kuka dika baba yekene. Not necessarily. Voice out your desire to him. Don't say it in your mind. Voice it out. And watch him guide you into every truth. You're going to realize it. That this thing you just prayed now, you're going to realize that he has answered you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, can we call for that daily bread? I needed to share that with someone. All right, now, let's go say, Father, I demand and I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me right now. Glory to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Woo, glory. You see, there's so much peace in my heart where our nation is concerned. Oh, glory to God. So much peace. I'm not bothered one bit. Now, it doesn't mean I don't care. <laughs> Praise God. But understand what I'm saying? I'm not bothered one bit. You know why I'm not bothered? Because energy. Oh, let, let, let's. It is still, in, it's still part of what we're talking about. Now, let's go back to our team scripture for the month Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. It says, you know, when, when, when Jesus said to those um, fellows in his hometown church, he got there and Luke chapter 4. And they, they called him to come read the scroll like he normally used to do. And then he got up there and he began to read. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach, you know, to open the blind eyes. And then he read and read and, and then he finished. And the Bible said he closed the book. And then he turned and looked at them and said, This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your sight. Or before your eyes. They didn't quite understand what he was talking about. Jesus was saying, he said, Isaiah spoke of this many years ago. But he was speaking about me. Now, then, I look at this scripture. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. You know what comes to mind? I look at my life and I can say, just like Jesus said to those his village people, praise <laughs> God. Oh, yeah, they, they were his village people, praise God. I can say, like Jesus said, hey, fellows, this day. This scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. I'm not prophesying. 
I'm telling you clearly that this, see, what God said, that what does it mean to be fulfilled? What God said here is true. I'm a product. I'm a testimony that it is true. You know how? I was talking to you about our nation. Now, I come in contact with people who are so troubled. They, they look at the political climate. They look at the things that are happening. They look at the people who are contesting. And, and people are so worried. I've got to talk a lot these days, you know, like, hey, but the truth is, why are you worried? You are worried because all you are looking at is the nation, the electoral system, the candidates that you see today. And you fear that this person... I, I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not sure he has good intentions for us. But he might just win the election because, like they say, he has the structures. Or this person, um, uh, we don't trust him. Or this one, well, we, we, uh, it, now, <laughs> we, we believe this one should win, but does he have what it takes to win? And number two, we really, really trust him. Apart from the fact that we are, we just want something to change, just something to break. So you look at all these things and then you keep worrying. There are people who worry from morning till evening. They just keep worrying and worrying and worrying. You know why? See, this is where your mind is locked up. And it's because you haven't heard from God. If you have heard from God, guess what's going to happen to you? You are going to keep your mind on Him. And when you keep your mind on Him, He takes responsibility in keeping you in perfect peace. He takes that responsibility. He, it's not you to keep yourself in peace. It's not your responsibility. He says, Thou will keep him. You, you understand when, I think I used this example before, a child is given to you to watch over. And you, you want that child, you don't want that child to cry. So what do you do? You keep everything. You get some toys. You get some teddies. You, you put a TV program with some cartoons that the child can watch and get you fascinated. All you are doing is to make sure. All you want to hear from that child is giggles, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Now, what's going through your mind? The child is at peace. And when that child starts crying, wah, 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 like, oh, okay, what do you want? Do you, are you hungry? Okay, you bring for, oh, blah, blah, blah. You're troubled. Why? Because it is your responsibility to make sure that child is in peace. Now, it is God's responsibility to make sure I am in peace. So you know what he does? He brings forth his word to me. And as I hold on to that word and keep my mind on that word, then he, he takes the full responsibility to make sure everything I need to keep my mind focused, to keep me in peace, is given to me. So where our nation is concerned, oh, God has spoken clearly. He's spoken his word. He's spoken to me. Praise God. I know where this is going to end. I know. I see it every day. Where it's going. I, I just know. And I can tell you this. If you're troubled about all these candidates you're seeing right now, go to sleep. Go to sleep. In a moment, it's going to change. It's going to change. And none of them you see today is going to be the president of this country. <laughs> oh, what, what, what I say. Sometimes when, when we begin to explain, you see, especially when you're explaining to people who don't hear what you hear. And that's why I'm not one of those who come and start putting pressure. Oh, no, no, no. If you come for my meetings, 
At least you took the liberty to come for my meeting. Okay? So I can explain. You know, why am I going to come on air and start telling you this is what is going to happen? Because I will have that time to show you precepts and you see, but when, when we're in, together in a meeting, I can tell, okay, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to happen. And this is what's going to happen. Now, because you've heard from the Lord. But I can just tell you this, that go to sleep. Just, just go to sleep. Don't stop troubling yourself. Is there going to be war? There's not going to be war. I'm telling you, there's not going to be war. Praise God. Why? Why are you so confident, Pastor George? Why are you so confident? Why? Because I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Nothing is going to happen in this nation without God telling me. Who are you then? <laughs> I'm a friend of God. He knows I'm here. He loves me and I love him too. And, and I know he takes cognizance of me in everything that he does. Why are you speaking so boldly? Oh, we boast in the Lord. Our boldness is in him. I can tell you for simply, I can just, there is no way anything is going to happen in this nation without the Lord telling me. I didn't say us, I said me. And he said us, oh, so yeah, you, you, you believers, you pastors, you prophets of God, you men of God. I don't know about others, I know about me. Number two, anything he tells me that I don't like, there are two options. I remember telling some folks one time, I said, listen, if you hear me tell you that the Lord said I should pack my family and leave town, then you should uh, sense and even if you have not heard, maybe you just follow suits. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. if it is confirmed that there's going to be danger, then the Lord will tell us, what to do. He'll tell us where to go. I'm not that ignorant and I'm not that um, careless not to be listening to the Lord all the time. See, I spend my time with him. That's all I do. 247, I spend with him. He said, but, 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 but you, don't you go elsewhere? Of course, I go everywhere I need to go to. <laughs> but what did he say? He says, I will never leave you. So he's with me everywhere I go. So when I say I spend my time with him, I'm not talking about I'm locked up somewhere. Don't tell me what is happening today. No, we, we have a close working relationship. I can be in a shopping mall doing stuff and then I hear him tell me, hey, um, this place is going to close up soon. Oh, okay. Why? And sometimes he tells you why. Sometimes you don't still get why. <laughs> Not because he doesn't tell you. Because you, 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 it's difficult for you to even figure out at that time. So there's nothing that's going to happen in this nation. I remember in October, the Lord had, look, before October, before we entered into October, the Lord began to talk to me about, look, there is, there is a violent spirit that is going to go through your nation. And, and, and especially your city, a violent spirit. Mm. So I began to ask the Lord, I said, okay, Lord, is there anything you will have us do about it? And what would you have us do about it? And the Lord spoke to me. Now you see, the fact that he has told you that a violent spirit is going to walk through your city. And now when God says a violent spirit is going to walk through your city, you know what to think about? Violence. Because if a violent spirit is going to go through, it means men are going to become violent and do a lot of things. So wicked men will just rise up. And then he says it's going to go through. He says it's going to do it. So it's, it's talking about a time of trouble. Now when you hear that, as, as, a, as a prophet of God, it's not to run to town to go say it. That's not your first assignment. Because sometimes people just want to prove that we're men of God. No, what did you do about it? No, 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 what did we do? You, what did you do about it? You don't need anybody to join you first until you start something and others see that, okay, let's do this together. And so I began to ask the Lord, what do we do about it, Lord? Okay, what do we do? 
And in a few days of, of praying and, and talking to the Lord about it, he, he, he spoke to me and said, you're going to fast from the 1st to the 8th of October. Okay, Lord, I'm ready. So I shared it with our fellowship members that we pray together. Say, hey guys, this is what we're going to do. 1st to 8th, we're fasting. 2nd to 8th, rather. 2nd to 8th, we're fasting. I said, okay. So we, we started the fast. And what do you do in your fast? Oh God, we come against the violence. Oh God, we come against... I said, no. This is not going to hurt us. If it must happen, it's not going to hurt us. But I don't want it to happen in the first place. Because you, you, you can calm this thing. Where is this coming from? Who, who, who is this coming against? Now, those are the things you do when you're fasting. And then I remember the Lord spoke to us on the 6th. And he said, you are going to pray for 24 hours from the 7th to the 8th. How are we going to do that, Lord? And then he gave me the strategy. He said, put, put yourselves one, one hour, but make sure there is prayer round the clock. I said, yes, sir. So I shared it with them, and then we took our turns. This is your time. This is everyone who's prayed to pray for one hour. Now, of course, some people prayed for more than one hour. You know what I mean? But then there was prayer going on all day for 24 hours. And we prayed from 6 p.m. on the 7th, and we finished by 6 p.m. on the 8th. And as when the Lord spoke to us, Isaiah 62 shall be fulfilled in your nation. Now, he didn't talk about the spirit of violence again. Now, I'm telling you, even after praying, I was like, okay, Lord. I, I was beginning to act like Jonah. Stepped out to see, okay, I know we are going to be saved, but what's going to happen? And then immediately after that, all the news, every day. The embassies began to withdraw their staff. Red alerts began to come from everywhere. Like, whoa, okay, are we really getting prepared for this? And then we waited and waited and waited. And then I went before the Lord and said, Lord, please don't let anything happen without my knowledge. And the Lord says, but you've stopped it. I said, oh, 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 really? <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. So he said, when I tell you that nothing of such will happen, believe me, because I know what I'm talking about. God is going to bring forth a redemption of our nation by himself. Our time is up for today. I'm going to continue on this tomorrow because we need to sort out the peace of our nation. Very important. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.